morning, Westeros! And welcome to our Morning Throners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Throners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite Song of Ice and Fire podcast. We are your Morning Throners, and we got John Four on deck. Gentlemen, this has the p- chance to be the quickest podcast of all time. <laughs> And it's a special podcast, kind of. I've I've mentioned to you guys, I think both before, why yeah. this is a special one. Is this halfway? This is halfway. Halfway, halfway chapters wise, I'm pretty sure is this chapter from the from prologue of Game of Thrones. And it's to, John trying to climb the wall. I think that's kind of fitting. It's not it even feels... him trying. He's just watching. Well, he's... It's John. Synops- I know, but synops- I mean, like... real here. John watches people <laughs> climb wall. He climbs, and but pod. then he climbs it. End pod. Thanks for coming, Kyle. Hey, even he the rope, the wall. even the ropes aren't easy, right? Two people die doing that, but so that he, sounds he does climb it thing. eventually. It does sound terrifying. I wouldn't enjoy either part but of it. But he doesn't climb it like he does in the show. In the show, he straight up climbs it like Yarl does, which yeah. is kind of like ridiculous to think that like just on the first Mr. try. Mr. Experience Climber, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just goes up an 800-foot <laughs> yeah. sheer face of ice, yeah. Yeah. They also meet the Thens on the other side of the wall. They don't... Yeah, Thens aren't with them. Yeah, they climb like in separate groups, which, which in this chapter doesn't really make sense because the Thens are like... Not cool with the wall. <laughs> We're not. I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and and we'll get into it. Yeah. All right. I say uh, that just, what do you think, Kyle? <laughs> you like the chapter? I mean, it was it was pretty cool, right? Like, this felt like a cohesive, like start to finish kind of story. Like there was on the wall and the dr- drama and stuff. Like mm-hmm. it was good. It was like a. It could have been a, a short story out of something else, you know. I, I, it felt like I, I wasn't left with much question, and like some of these other chapters, you know, you read through and I'm like, "What the fuck is happening?" I mean, till till the last couple lines, right? And you're like, "Yeah, oh, well, yeah." I think the last couple lines do leave us with an interesting question, but we'll get there. You're right, end, but so. it it wasn't it doesn't really connect to the wall. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I it think it's, it's the reason of, they're climbing the wall. I but. think it's a little. I, I kind of, I'm kind of with you there on the connection of like, oh, she you almost. Died. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You almost died, and you don't even have said thing. But well, no, they almost died because they don't have the yeah, thing to destroy right, the wall with. Right. So that, that I mean, sense. like, yeah, I, and, I, and we're, and we're being vague right? here. In case anyone didn't read the yeah. chapter, Eager brings up the Horn of Winter at, at the end, right? So she brings up the Horn of Winter, and that's what that's what we we're talking about. Mm-hmm. They didn't. That's why she's upset. So they're getting ready to leave the cave, and John's wondering about ghost ghosts. is missing. Yeah. Yep. yep. Chapter starts off at the very beginning with him wondering about ghost. And then as he comes out of this cave, I think we get this uh, like this cool description of like the morning. The eastern sky was pink near the horizon and pale gray higher up. The sword of the morning still hung in the south. The bright white star in its hilt blazing like a diamond in the dawn. But the blacks and grays of the darkling forest were turning once again to greens and golds, reds and russets. And above the soldier pines and oaks and ash and sentinels stood the wall, the ice pale and glimmering beneath the dust and dirt that pocked its surface. So kind of just like a cool introduction to the thing that they're going to be dealing with the whole time. I was say, it's such a powerful kind of vision or visual, right? Like yes. I, a lot of these things, it's like, okay, castle. I just kind of, you know, like mentally I'm like, okay, just a bunch of stone, like stone buildings. Like I don't, I don't yeah. complete it. The wall is just feels like this massive <laughs> entity that like Looming. it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's, it's like the Great Wall of China that's 600 feet higher. <laughs> it made of ice. Way made higher. Of ice. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I think it is pretty cool. I just think it's cool too, like when you're in like the mountains, right? And like a sunrise in the mountains is way cooler than a sunrise at your house type of thing, too. Right? Yeah, I'm just anywhere different, pretty much. Yeah, like yeah. in a new land. Yeah, and this is like like we said, it's like a big day for John. Like he's doing something that it's like he's sworn to stop it. Like he kind of has like again, like in mm-hmm. the last chapter, he had those like conflicting thoughts. I feel like there's not quite as many of this chapter he like kind of wonders so, how to get out of it right like what would i do if i could like yeah, get out like yeah. either way it's a all lose 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 for him pretty much yeah. right yeah like, it's a, a catch 33 because there's three options and <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't think that's what the 22 means yeah so they get to the wall uh stir sent 12 uh men east uh scout and 12 men west just in case there are uh any any patrols out there they're gonna try to Stop the climb. I, I wonder, like, what the point of that, like, really is, right? Like, so you're Jarl, you're halfway up the wall, and you hear a war horn. Like, 
Uh oh. You at least have some heads up that <laughs> yeah, rocks like, might be coming at you. Yeah, but like you could like climb three hundred feet up. You can't climb three hundred feet down. Like you're in the middle of the wall. Like what are you gonna yeah, do? Yeah, but you might be able to go left or right. Like just like you know, hold and... it and stop making noise. Well, well that's not even true, now. So we just found out in this chapter that there's like man or natural chimneys in Yeah, like, you could hide. Yeah. yeah. If you can get to this cave. They said there's little caves in the walls that people can hide. Or a better in, like, ledge or something. Just yeah. Yeah, it just gives you a little bit of a heads up. It's better than not having any idea. Like, right? Oh shit, we might get hit in the head here soon. <laughs> yeah, and I think that might even mean something for like them at the base. They're just kind of like sitting ducks watching. Yeah, and at the I beginning think. for sure, like when they're first getting there, getting everything ready, you definitely want to know if you're about to get like ambushed. But yeah, I, my, I thought like once you're like halfway up, there's not much you're going to be able to do. If, yeah, you got to find that chimney. <laughs> someone shows up. Uh, but yeah, this is Jarl's time to shine, right? He's uh, he's leading the pack. Yep. Which we kind of figured out last time, uh, like he—that's why he's here. Like we heard in the last John chapter that like there was like a little bit of friction between Stir and Jarl. And again, it's confusing. Like they say Magnar, which resolves a lot. here shortly. Yeah, Magnar <laughs> is Stir. Right? Magnar and Stir is the same thing. Magnar just means yeah. Lord in the old dung. So yeah, John keeps saying the Magnar. He's just saying the Lord, talking about Stir. So yeah, but like we learned last time that that's what Jarl was for. He's young. Like I think he was only like twenty, and he'd already been over the wall eight times or something like that. He was definitely. Well versed in in yeah. scaling the wall. This is what that he was did. His because I I remember saying like oh he was nobody but then you're like no <laughs> he's kind of the expert <laughs> the at wall this. guy. Yeah. I was like oh okay yeah. yeah fair enough yeah he's good at this. So everybody knows the wall is 700 feet tall, but what's interesting about where they are now is John says it's both Jarl has found a place where it was both higher and lower. So what is he talking about there? So the wall is built on top of a hill, but the hill actually like ramps up. Yeah, so like instead of, of building it 800 feet on top of the hill, it's like built into the it's wall. It's still 800 feet, but it's above sea sea level kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Like, just imagine like a mountain, like ridge, like a ridge line, like not a mountain that comes to a peak, but like a mountain that has like a ridge line. You know what I mean? Pretty much when they yeah. built the wall, they built it on the top of that ridge line because like <laughs> it makes it look taller from a distance. Like when there's forest, you can't tell. So Brandon, the builder, just always was building on the highest point possible. Which is why John says that like Benjen had once told him that the wall was a sword to the east of Castle Black, but a snake to a the snake. west. Meaning like it's curvy. It's not. It's not nearly as straight because they're trying to just go from like hill to Hang hill on top of the ridge. Yeah. Because say you're trying to make it 700 feet tall above sea level, pretty much the whole way through, and you're in a valley, then you have to put just way more ice there. If you're on a hilltop, mm. you have to put half as much ice. So you just need way less which, building material. Which is kind of stupid, though, though, right? Like, it's not a 700-foot tall wall that Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. only a, what, whatever, which it's is what... 300 feet. 300 feet. Which it says, is, like, where they're at, a third of it is so, yeah, land, right? The way I pictured it was, like, a snake. I thought it was more like a snake. Like, the top of the wall was flat, and then the underneath followed all the hills up and down, kind of slithering like a snake. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, I think the top That was is, the way I was seeing I think the top is probably a little bit snakier on the west as well, just for the reason you're saying that, like, yeah. it probably is pretty close to and 700 it, feet tall exactly. And it's kind of weaving in and out of hilltops right now. It's like... Yeah, exactly. But I'm thinking, like, just from, from Castle Black to Eastwatch, it probably is pretty much just 700 feet tall the whole way. Assuming that there's not really much terrain at all, like hill, hills right, at all. Mm, yeah. But to the other side, like just the fact that you are going up and down mountains, and he says sometimes it's 800 feet, sometimes it's 900 feet, means that, yeah, even the top of the wall ha- changes 100 feet in elevation from time to time. Right? From at least from where Castle Black is to where they are now. Yeah, I mean, like, maybe feet. they just didn't do it perfect. Like, yeah, I, but to your point, like it's snaky at the bottom. It's a little bit snaky at the top. I think it's but also. But it's weird to me that he side. didn't he didn't just build it seven hundred feet everywhere and and like you know as a big fuck you and then at the top of that hill it would be seventeen hundred feet or something if it was a thousand foot tall hill. Well, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. He doesn't. So like, yeah, so he, if there was a thousand foot hit tall hill, he would have just built into it and then it would have came out the other side, right? Like he would have used that as part of the wall. Exactly, because what it, what it says okay. here is Brandon the That's builder had the laid his it. huge foundation blocks along the heights wherever feasible, and hereabouts the hills rose wild and rugged. So he'd always put the blocks on the tallest parts of the mountains where he could. Because kind of to this point, like even John says, like when they do get there, yeah, only 600 feet is ice or whatever. But the climb up to the ice is like John doesn't even climb way, the mountain. Right? Easier. He stays at the base of the ridge. He doesn't climb to the – like John's well, not like in touching distance It's still dangerous though, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, I know because Jarl climbs the tree that's – the tree is still – I don't know if this is even possible. I guess it is. Um, the tree is like 300 feet, right? I think it's 100 feet. So I think the hill takes them up about like the mountain. They literally climb yeah. like 200 feet of a mountain. 
then at the top of the mountain they found a tree that's leaning against the wall about a hundred feet up more i think so yeah you he know what i think the worst part up. about climbing the wall which they kind of hit on is like just how cold your hands would be like to, just the the numbing the numbness of climbing well, ice yeah they kind of get to it like the coldness of your hands is good though because when their hands are warm it makes any time you touch the ice it it melts the melts ice it yeah, it makes it slippier yeah i'm sure yeah, they have gloves I mean, or something just, but yeah but i mean you hold ice for long enough i don't know yeah. your, your, your gloves your are gloves gonna are gonna fail long yeah uh all right so they find a good spot uh the thems were afraid of the wall as well we kind of mentioned that in the beginning uh when we said the show's a lot different but yeah they're like fuck that we're not climbing without the the rope ladder John's getting a little perspective, right? Like it's it's it, this side is scary to him, then of course that side is scary to these people, right? Yeah. Like just a matter of where which side you're yeah. on. Yeah, he says in the Seven Kingdoms it was said that the wall marked the end of the world. That is true for them as well. It was all in where you stood. Yeah, I feel like Nelson has brought up that perspective too with like just George. Like these wildlings like didn't choose to be wildlings; they just happened to have. We've talked about that a lot with these people, but well, I think the way where George thought of, thought up the wall is he was on a trip to England, Ireland. I should know in my history better wherever Hadrian's Wall is, which isn't is he said it's not even a huge wall. It's maybe like three feet tall and it's like completely rubble. It's just like a rubble of this old like I guess like I waist high wall walls. that they used to have I think in England, and it was basically like the end of the the world. And he was like. He was there at like dusk and the sun was setting and he was only standing on this like three foot tall, I think like small stone rubble wall. But he was just trying to like imagine what it would be like to be like in the medieval ages, be like a soldier posted there. And what you're told is the barbarians are the are who live beyond here. Just like wild people who are uncivilized and all they'll do is come and attack you and try and rape our people and steal our goods. And that's kind of like where he thought up the wall idea was, except he just blew it up to a hundred but that's that's kind of like the whole point is like we don't know what's on the other side of this thing like at all we can't even see on the other side of this thing i think at least hadrian's wall you could see over but yeah just like that feeling of un the unknown on like what's on the other side yeah yeah it's like it's like you're told that there's a giant octopus that lives in the bottom of the ocean that's going to kill you right well you there is you can't see it isn't there a giant so octopus? then you don't <laughs> cthulhu is that what you're talking about i mean their giant squids are a real thing that are like way yeah, bigger yeah, than people yeah. i don't think they eat yeah people, well, and they will fuck you up i think davy Davy uh, Jones is cracking too, is swimming around. <laughs> I'm talking about real life, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is where we get John's kind of predicament. Like, which side of the wall am I on nowadays? Am I here with Eager, like just literally turning into a wildling? Am I ditching her to go back to Castle Black, or am I going to bring her to Castle Black? Well, so he's 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 falling in lust here, right? Like puppy love is essentially what's definitely happening. Well, the one thing I think what he thinks, which I'm not sure is true, but it's like, a, I think it's an interesting thought is even if he knows he doesn't like actually love this girl, which I think he, I'm not saying he doesn't, but even if he like realizes that, that this is just like a fling, he does say like, if I just take off and go to castle black, like, Stir might just kill her. Yeah. Stir might just, yeah. which I don't know if that's true. Two but, like, hearts who, that who beat us. Well, no, two. Well, it might be true because like she vouched for him. Yeah. Like, so that was she put her life on the line for him, and then if he leaves, but uh, yeah, but again, like she, it's not, it's not like she was trying to a bit like aid and abet a tra like a traitor. She, it doesn't matter. She thought she that he would just eventually. Still, she just got nah, fooled more than I, the rest. I of agree them. with Kyle. I agree with Kyle. But like, this is her argument. I just got fooled. I just got fooled more than the rest of you, or just as much. Sure, as but she's also been like, she stuck up for him. She like she put her life when on the he line. Lied, like, he no, is no he's longer. He's no longer. A, uh, yeah, man of the watch. He's he's done. And then the Harry turns and goes back and gives them all their secrets and yeah. all that shit. Yeah, no way, Nelson. No, she, I, I, she's dead. I, I'm she's not saying gone. she wouldn't. I'm just saying I don't know. If, I don't know if that's sure of a thing that as John says. So, so what he concludes is 100%, like, if I do ditch, sure thing. what he concludes is if I do ditch, she's got to come with me. But like, then where can we go? They're not going to let her. Like, she's, they're not going to let me back at Castle Black, walking in with a wildling, yeah. like. Hey, here's the or person the I broke my vows with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, gotta go east. That, well, he says I can't go. To Jeff's point, you probably could go anywhere because who's gonna know? Just change your clothes. But he says anywhere we go, a wildling and a deserter wouldn't be accepted. Well, we'd have to go see Gendel and his, and his uh, children. Yeah, and but they're probably hungry enough to eat us. <laughs> yeah, so it, basically, he doesn't come to a conclusion there. Just no, there's no good options. Pretty much is the, the end of his thought. That's there. the lose, lose, yeah, lose. I was talking about. Thirty-three, earlier. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, but then Jarl's raiders, right? Like they just start running up the hill. Is essentially what what starts happening. They're, they're they racing. they group up. This is and, like the All American yeah. Race or whatever that shows called Rat Race. <laughs> the Amazing Race. Amazing Race. I think there was yeah, a rat pretty much. Race it's too. team. 
three teams of four. Three teams of four. Three teams of four. Yeah, and they, and they're all the winner. The winning group is Promised Swords from so, Mance, um, yeah. from from the South, right? Like Castle Forge deal. Yeah, good good swords. This seems like a really bad play by Mance. Like, this Why? seems like a tortoise in the hair type thing. You well, want to be the tortoise? Uh, There's here's no the other thing. point to well, get hang on. Top hang on, faster. Jeff. Before you have anything to say, because <laughs> you probably got you guys probably don't remember this, but pizza delivery used to be like thirty minutes or it's free. Yeah, yeah, I remember but that. So many fucking teenagers got killed in car accidents. Oh god, because they were speeding to try because they would take the money out of it, like out of your own paycheck. That was you. So like, I mean, there's a real life situation of like sometimes speed isn't the best thing. Yeah, yeah. Tobey Maguire or Spider Man Two or Three, whatever. <laughs> I think he had like 19 minutes to do it. My dad said that when he was in college, it was like they had the same type of thing. Like it was 30 minutes or you're free, but he was on like the ninth floor of a apartment building that only had one <laughs> so elevator. So he was guaranteed that it was only had yeah. one elevator. So like if it was close to the mark or something like that, they would like have the window open. They could see when they pulled up. If it was close to the mark, they would just pull the elevator and hold it at the top floor. Oh, uh, that's a rap <laughs> move. <laughs> that is a rap move. That's a scum move. He's a scallywag. <laughs> yeah. But at that point, then you can just give the guy like a, a nice tip. I don't know if this is yeah. what my dad did, but you can give the guy but, a nice tip and just say fuck the no restaurant. There's no way. If you're, if you're that but, worried about the elevator that they're giving a nice tip. <laughs> yeah. But no, and that was the other side of it, right? Like that was – I think a lot of that came out of the driver's pay or out of the, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. pay for the yeah. pizza. Sure. I mean, Tobey Maguire didn't – got hollowed out when he didn't I mean, what right. happens if you just like – they didn't have Google Maps like at a time, right? It you, was, it you're, was crazy. You're yeah. putting in an address and it's literally like a 30-minute drive. You're like, well, I'm, I'm fucked. Anyway, yeah. I think we're going too far <laughs> on this one. Um, All right, so uh, the first team gets swords and a mention in Mance's song about them climbing the wall. So, oh yeah, you get a name drop. Yeah, you're going to yeah. be famous for eternity. But real uh, quick, just back on the Mance thing, like the guy who I think, like the, what's his guy's name, Aroch, who's like kind of slow and steady yeah, wins the race. Yeah, he has to go. Him. He goes like completely horizontal for like 500 feet just to like get to a chimney. Like I don't think he cares about the swords. He's at the top of the wall, heart beating at the end of the thing. He's still living. Jarl's in a fucking tree. At some point, if you're looking up and you see Jarl's that high ahead of you, you're like, all right, yep. fuck it. Okay, just everybody take it. a breath. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We lost this one. Let's just the cross swords the are lost. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, there, the next part is a little bit about the history of raiders getting over the wall, Nels. Uh, I don't really understand what John was getting at. Like, at the end, he's like, does Stern know how to play the game? Like, it's What's like we're all about we're here? all together anyway. Well, like, it, like maybe that that thought actually does matter because Jarl's dead now, and and like Stir will be the only one in charge. But like. Like what's the what's the point of thinking about that if John's like he should be thinking tomorrow we'll all be on the other side of the wall and then like you know what I mean like then it'll well, be yeah. joint rule again. But no, here's what I think though. I think I think what he was saying was like if you go over the wall and you don't blend in and you are calling attention to yourself because that's like the story, right? He's like a lot of the guys would get over, they'd steal the first hearse they saw, yeah. and then like the watch get would in be all this notified. Trouble yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the watch would be notified immediately. So yeah, they they blew their own cover super mm-hmm. fast. So like he was wondering, does Stir know these tricks? But you're 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 kind of right now, so I guess everybody would be together. But he was still seemed like he was, obno- I don't want to say obnoxious, flamboyant's not the word either. He he seemed like he didn't. He's not afraid to cause a scene. Who Stir Stir Stir? Yeah, yeah. So like he's cut. I think John's like he's gonna kind of. He's not gonna be able lay, to chill out once we get over there, right? Like, should, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was what he was saying. All right. Um, so, bam! Here goes Jarl right out the top of the tree, and he's climbing. And the other two teams didn't find a good enough tree, so they're climbing the actual wall, maybe a little bit earlier, uh, lagging a little bit behind. Uh, and Magnar is even pissed here about the pizza delivery boy speed. Like, <laughs> hurry this shit up! Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get over here. Which they're is gonna, crazy, right? Like us. this dude. He's terrified of the wall, and then he's like, "These people aren't climbing it fast enough." Like that's got to be well again. So, so I think in the last chapter, John, they were asking John like, "How often do patrols go out?" And in his head, he was thinking like once every four days. I'm pretty sure it's like once every most, once every four yeah. days is when uh, Mormont was sending them. He does he what? But he tells him, "Oh, I don't know," because like Mormont's not in charge it anymore. It could be it well, could yeah, be random, random now. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of like lies and says like, oh, it could just be every day. It could be. But he probably knows that like, oh, if they're not there, <laughs> like it's like a, da- it's like a, a daily here. thing. Yeah. Like, it's going to take I all day like long. This is, yeah. Like John's not over till midnight. Like what does the climbers really going faster at this point like matter? Like 
the getting it's the a, other hundred them... men up the five ladders. Because it seems like they're only putting one person on a ladder at a time. How long does it take them to climb? Six hours? Six hours for them to just scale the wall? At least six hours. The six hours is when the Yara falls. And then so however then long it takes them to burn the bodies. Hours, eight, eight hours to... <laughs> yeah, probably eight hours Yeah, to get to the top. And then they gotta climb up the the swinging rope yeah, ladder. Yeah, then you have 110 is... people who have to climb up the swinging rope ladder. Dude, I bet... And, but it's, climbing... but they only go five at a time. I bet climbing the rope ladder... Is probably scarier than scaling it with spikes and shit. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's not attached at all. You're you're not. Yeah, <laughs> it's just swinging there, right? At the and very bottom, it would be like like it's almost like the closer to the top you get, the better because the less swing you'd have. You're not anchored in at all. Like at least these people are. At least they're anchoring themselves in. So yeah. like if Jarl does fall, which he does in a second, the three other people can like all right, like, get your ass back back going. Yeah. Uh, like this. The the swinging rope probably scary as shit. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. Also, don't like this one. <laughs> how did they get the ladder once Jarl's team actually falls completely off? I'll save it for when we get there. Yep. All right. Um. So, blah, 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 blah. John, John thinks a little bit about his because he's watching yeah. him actually do the climbing now, and he thinks back to his own climb the night that basically he captured Eager with the. I guess he captured, her, and then she got a wet. Let her go. But like, yeah. yeah, that the, night, the original, the original night of them yeah. attacking the wild the four wildlings. Were, Cause he had to do was. a pretty tricky climb that night with stone stake. And he did that at nighttime, but he thinks even that's nothing compared to like what these guys are doing. Yeah. The well, yeah, he's trying to relate to this and he's like, man, these guys are balls, ballsy yeah. is pretty much what he's thinking the whole time. Like this is brave. insane. At least they're brave. And it's a, uh, and it's a sweaty wall day too. So it's not, yeah. Even, yeah. Like worse conditions to climb the wall. Yep. Um, and they're, but they're doing the same thing. Like the way that they're climbing the wall is like one person goes pretty much like I guess like ten feet up the probably the length of the rope that connects two people. Then, bang bang bang, hammers like a secure thing, loops that around. Yarl keeps going, and then num- mm-hmm. guy number two goes to the first spot, and then that's when three got three goes. So it seems like they're it's like pretty safe. They're not just like climbing like willy nilly with the only each other. They're like anchoring every ten feet. Like and that's yeah. why it's such a slow process. They did point out like the equipment got worse as it went on though yeah. and stuff though. Yeah, a couple like, of people they, had iron or not everybody has the great boots. Yeah, not a, and then like the spikes turn into bone and, and <laughs> yeah. something else. Yeah, antler, bone and think, horn. Yeah. yeah, the axe was antler too. Like they're just digging yeah. holes with antler. Yeah, like, I don't know. John at some point was like, "Man, I hope these guys do get found. That would make my day easier." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, "That would that would be perfect. A, a good patrol could end this." Um. All it needs is maybe a couple arrows or a pail of stones to come down, and and this would be a, over with, you know, just a couple, a couple uh, patrolmen is all it would take. Exactly. But nobody showed up. He thinks back to a little Ned, a Ned quote: mm-hmm. "No wall can keep you safe. A wall is only as strong as the men who defend it." Which is there's nobody, <laughs> there's nobody defending it. So, yeah, it's like a, it's an obstacle, but shoot. it just slows you down. Yeah. Uh, until a bad sheet of ice and you're falling to well, your Jarl's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Jarl's first down. fall. Here, right? Yeah, yeah. So Yarl's up ahead again. It, it's a patch of bad ice. He, yeah, wraps it, wraps his rope around like a jutting out piece of ice. But I guess when he puts his weight on it, cracks, falls, gets caught, cliffhanger style. If anybody seen that movie? Great movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone. He gets caught cliffhanger style, and they sort that deal out. It lets Greg the Goat catch up, who's the guy who's leading the the other one of the other groups, the third group. But they're back in it eventually. Arock, they keep going. Whatever. And yeah, they go four four hours. They run out of steel stakes, which the other ones. John's thinking that like John also mentions that every time they need a foothold, they literally have to kick out like five or six kicks of the ice every single time they want to put their foot down. He's like, dude, their legs and arms must just be like so tired. Like, these dude, guys can you imagine the the? And I, they did mention earlier like these guys are all like skinny fit guys like with like cross country. It, it reminded me of like cross country bodies right like or like climber if you know any like there's a guy there's a few guys at work that like are really into climbing like I, one guy like actually worked at a climbing gym and used to like do it like in actual yeah. like mountains and stuff and he's like super skinny but like you can see all his veins like just super mm-hmm. lean right but John still sinewy. like to work it's just like a marathon climb oh, oh yeah, yeah for not sure. easy brutal it's crazy and with bad equipment too like nine pull-ups gets me tired <laughs> Gosh, i fall after nine <laughs> So, yeah, they're slowly going. We said it earlier. The one guy, Aroch, at one point, he's moving horizontal because 
there's mm-hmm. like a patch of bad ice that they're trying to get around or no, they're trying to get to a they're working. They're working chimney. sideways to a natural chimney. Yeah. And then I don't know, just crack and a, a huge sheet falls. Yeah. I think again, George, it's like one of those things where George just writes it at first. So you think it's this guy who's moving horizontal, who's getting shit, mm-hmm. shit on by this. But after you hear about the devastation, it's like, yeah, you find out it, it was a Yarl. Oh, fell. fuck. Yarl. Yeah. The main dude, yeah, <laughs> the pin, expert, pinned which is kind of what top. happens to a lot of the free climbers. Right. I feel like they all end up dying too, like the best ones. Cause they, Dude, I couldn't imagine. I think a lot of times the best crazy. ones do it though. Like, there's two parts of that, right? It's like some of it's complacency, but I think more of it is like the best dudes are like the thrill doing seekers. Doing the hardest so they're doing courses. The hardest courses yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. So it might be Fudge it might be like that. one of those things where like this guy Airock is like is like fuck it, we'll th- we'll go slow, we'll go to and the trying chimney. to go as fast as you can and exactly. It, but Yarl's like, no, we want that sword. Let's get to the top. Blah 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 blah. Dead. Yeah, calm down, Jarl. You don't need that sword. It would have been more impressive as a leader to get all 12 guys up there than you fucking getting up there first. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, so Charles, uh, Soldier Pine stabs him. He's impaled by a tree. Yep, and John mentions there's a red streak on the wall from where someone falling got like hit by something that must be like jutting out from the wall. Yeah, so, oh, uh, man. <laughs> and John thinks to himself, the wall defends itself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a tall enough one that it does kind of... <laughs> defend itself a little bit yeah. it's not perfect obviously but yeah so as uh, the other two teams continue to climb they make the top uh the people on the bottom find wood to burn uh the bodies and uh then they let the ladder down which they were carrying up on their like around their shoulder right so this well, is no they let a rope down yeah and then pulled the ladder up yeah, the ladder was too heavy gotcha 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 yeah. to, so, to your point though they had, to, they had to combine so here's my point they i guess they could have at that point, then attached Charles. I thought the ladder was just like they, the two teams met up at the top, right? And they're like, all right, connect our ladders through that over. But they were missing a third of the ladder. Yeah, they right? connected their fell. ropes and threw their ropes over to pull up the ladder. But to that point, like, yeah, I guess they didn't need. <laughs> they didn't need all yeah, three that, groups. That's true. Yeah, yeah they didn't. that was what I was thinking. I was like, well, how the fuck did they reach the bottom if they're missing a yeah. whole group's rope? Or maybe well, yeah, they maybe they had planned maybe maybe two each of them had enough. long enough yeah yeah I mean the only but reason to send question. more than just like one person right is so that you have enough rope so like there's no other per- there's I think no it's other- to help catch and stuff too I guess yeah but like two yeah I don't know I don't know if like I don't know climbing in teams I, seems I guess you're safer. Right, safer yeah but anyway yeah so they drop rope down connect it to a ladder and pull that entire ladder up and they and do that process that happens five, five times, times. yeah. yeah. Exactly. So there's five ladders. Each of them are long enough to reach the top. And then it mentions that once they had all the ladders in place, the Magnar commands five men to start climbing, which again was where I'm getting this idea that they're literally only having one person on each ladder at a time. Because yeah. why else would he only command five? Why not just be like, all right, everybody Dude, go on the ladders. it would be so swingy. It would be so swingy. You think more people might make it less swingy, but I guess you just, it's rope. And you can't I, have I would that rather, many people on the I'd rather have ladder. somebody try to like hold hold the bottom. the bottom of my ladder <laughs> yeah. while I climb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. But because they're only going like five at a time, again, it's, a, it's an assumption based on like the, the text, but John says he doesn't even make it up till midnight. So this is a full day. Sunrise to, sunrise to midnight. Yep. And two people actually just fell to their death trying to climb these ladders. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They fell. Fuck it. Next two up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just watch out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, watch out for fall bodies. <laughs> Eager wasn't too excited. She she almost fell three times. Yeah. So when she that's what she well, does. She, she does. I was gonna say she doesn't. You know nothing, Jon Snow here. That yeah, at the bottom. Skip, right? yep. Get a couple of them. Yeah. So it's like she hates the wall. Can you feel how cold it is? And he says, "John's like, yeah, it's made of ice, duh." It is. And she's like, "You know nothing. Wall is made of blood." Yeah, I wanted to say that one too because this makes me think of another person that we've been reading a few chapters from. Bricks and blood built Astapor. Oh, okay. It's kind of what we hear about Azipor. Yeah. And and like the uh, the wall is made of giant ice bricks. Like they mentioned at one point that like Grig is able to climb yeah, so well because like the bricks are unevenly placed, so there's like a few feet of like you can stand shelf. on this one. Yeah, shelf shelf almost. And that's where a lot of the chimneys come from is when they weren't put exactly like next to each other horizontally wind, wind and then the and erosion gets on. Exactly. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. Uh so John then gets to the top, and Eager's like, oh, shit, I almost fell. And she's crying a little bit. 
And uh, John thinks she's scared. Yeah, the worst is over. Don't be afraid. Which is still kind of crazy, right? Like, they have to go back down. Like, they don't have the elevator still, or are they going to go to an elevator at one of these places? I guess you could go to and one you... of the ruined castles that, that might have a leftover but, stair. But still, man. Yeah. Yeah, that I... would be risky. <laughs> yeah, I would a probably, ruined castle, exactly. I'd probably vote for that rather than scale down this wall. Are you kidding me? I mean, they scaled up it, Going though, down right? is a lot of times like worse than going up. Scare, definitely scary. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Looking down at your feet, trying to find like the foot and run. Like, like on a ladder. Down. You just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm fine. I'd rather, we got, what, 20, 36 guys now? Like, let's fight. Let's fight our way there. I guess, <laughs> 30, whatever, 32. What are you talking guys. about? Uh, I'm just trying to do the counting. They have 30 men, right? They had, they had 24 scouts. No, they had 100. Oh, they, had a, they had 120 oh, yeah, at the fuck at last that. chapter. Let's go. Let's go fight. Fight let's what? Fight what oh, fight a cat. Oh, just try to, to take the stairs. A- oh, gotcha. I'm trying yeah, to, try to fight the for the stairs. Gotcha. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Uh, but then we get another. She wasn't. It seems that seems like that whole steer thing and how to be a raider <laughs> yeah. and like you would fail is what I'm. That was what I'm trying we to know say. That, right? Like that's, yeah. Okay. They have a hundred men. We know the wall only has what three hundred spread out. These dudes don't know that, first off. They know that capsules are unoccupied, though. So, at the worst, they come up across a patrol, they kill them before they get a big horn off, and then they take the stairs clean. How about this? How about this way down? You take a rope, 700 foot long, and you stake it to the wall, and then you walk 700 feet away from where you staked it, and then you just step off the wall, and just basically you have a giant swing now. And you swing down <laughs> yeah. to the bottom. And then you smear along the wall. <laughs> yeah, and... that's the problem with that. And you hope your math was correct and you don't just... Yeah, yeah, you ho- yeah it wasn't on one ground. of those 600 feet tall spots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You hope yeah. the ground isn't too close. Yeah. Or not too far away. You're 100 feet away. I like away, where your head's at. <laughs> it's outside the box. But... Yeah, so when they get to I'm the top... Take the stairs. He's like, don't be, don't be scared. The worst is over. And she says, I wasn't frightened. You know nothing. And well, she must punch. She must punch him off the wall. I think it's I wide up top. Yeah, she hits him pretty hard. Um, and she says, "Not for fear." She kicks savagely at the ice beneath her heel, chopping at a chunk. I'm crying because we never found the Horn of Winter. We opened half a hundred graves and let all those shades loose in the world, and never found the Horn of Jorman to bring this cold thing down. End of chapter. Dun, 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 yeah, I mean, I guess they didn't find what they were looking for. That's. She seems pretty pissed. That's pretty much what she says here. Yeah, so this is interesting because kind of what Corin told John when he sent him off was they're looking for something. Like find out what it is. Find out what it is. That's your that's your mission. So Mm -hmm. And here's part of it. Kind of just found it out. It's kinda like what's John what does John say next is like an interesting like Yeah. hmm. I was gonna ask Kyle if he remembered a mention of a horn. There is one, and I think you brought it up recently. I definitely do remember hearing about this horn. Um, to raise the wall, I think, right? Isn't there some song with the giants? Well, we've heard about this horn of Jorman several times. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like the giants, when he was talking to the giants or something, there was a discussion about it. So exactly. It. So every time we've heard about this before, in the ancient days, Jorman, who blew the horn of winter and woke giants from the earth, right? So that's what we've heard about yeah. the horn of Jorman before. I think we've heard it two or three times, actually. But here, Egret's claiming that that horn would take down the wall. But there's actually, they've, we found a horn. John found a horn. Go- yeah, broken horn. Yeah, so that that's the horn in that the, I was in wondering. with the. Yeah, because I think it was in with the the um dragon glass. Exactly, and I think that's the last time we talked about the, the horn of Jorman. You had brought that up and been like, "Hmm, there's we have this horn." So what does John say next? I feel like you pose that question, and I never made a prediction. I think that has to be like kind of this week's. Do you think he one, says right? anything, or he's just like, "Oh, relief! They don't have." Well, what they yeah, maybe not. For. Maybe not even says next, but like, what does he think? Right? Like, because like, because like, I'm saying, yeah. like, I know, I know, you're saying. that's yeah. If this was his mission. What is the next? Yeah. So is it like cause earlier? He was like, "What do I do? Do I stay here and become a wildling full out? Do I try and abandon and let Ygritte get killed and go back to Castle Black? I don't think do I, I don't think he can. Her? I don't think he can go anywhere yet. I think he he's kind of stuck in this situation for now. Yep. Um. Maybe when he gets to Castle Black, if they get to Castle Black, like he can rouse some people and like with ghosts. But if I don't know. I feel like there. that's so far in the future that like right now, <laughs> the next few John chapters are going to be him in this group. Yeah, we don't even know if Ghost is going to make it back to Castle Black. But yeah. So I I think it, I think he's kind of got this weird loyalty to to Ygritte right now as well. Um, kind of mirroring Rob's situation where. Yeah, you know they 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 have this honor bound duty. I don't know. Yep, changed your campaign, changed the goals of 
whatever? Uh, I don't know that it changed him. I think it just kind of changed his some of his Priority. motivations in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Well, I think his goals have been kind of up in the air for like the past couple of John chapters, and I don't, I, I don't know. That's that's what I guess the point of the question is like, what's he think next? Is does this solidify? His goal one of the three in one moves. way or the other. Exactly. Yeah. Is he going to stay with Egret? Is he going to go back to Castle Black, or is he taking her to Castle Black? Yeah. Some some escape with Catch her. Thirty three. Something. Yeah. I so think yeah. he's going to try and take her if anything happens, but I don't know how that's going to work out. <laughs> the name of this pod is Catch John 33. Four Catch Thirty Three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no need to drag it out. One of the shortest ones we've had in a while. We'll see Kyle in the next one for Jamie Four, and we'll see the rest of you guys in the spoiler section. Bye. Bye. All right, later, nerds. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Bye, Kyle. Bye, Kyle. See you on the next one. Now, on a spoiler section. Four, John, four. I think it'll be a short spoiler section, too. Uh, yeah, just I mean, like I don't short have non-spoiler. shit, man. I, I just think it was a quick little chapter, you know? I honestly think they could have ran this chapter into like whatever happens next with John. Like, could yeah, they probably have could done have a, a little bit more? I'm not sure what's next. It might we might not see John for a while. It might be like after Bran. Gets, it might be like when he's seeing Bran. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the one thing I had was actually the quote that I read at the very beginning. Yeah, I mean, I wrote I wrote down that they see the the uh, what's it called? The Sword of the Morning the, the Sword constellation. Of the morning. Yeah. Yeah. The Sword of the Morning still hung in the south. The bright white star in its hilt blazing like the diamond in the dawn. So is that are you saying that the sword is still in the south or the actual Dane is in the south? Like what's I your, think the interesting part there is like a diamond in the dawn. The sword of the morning still hung in the south, the bright white star in its hilt blazing like a diamond in the dawn. With dawn sword of the morning, right? It's like the I same, mean it's same it's thing. actually it's actually dawn as a time setting, right? Yeah, but we've said that before, like Corin Halfhand came at dawn. Well, yeah, morning. What do you mean? Like dawn is like the sword, Lightbringer, right? Sword of the morning, yeah, dawn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightbringer. It's all the same thing. Like, and here we have the constellation, sword of all the right, morning, so... and dawn in the same sentence. Okay, so tell me why that's cool. I just think it's because it's John. John's gonna be the sword of the morning. John's gonna be Azor High, if that's the same thing. I think because cause John, I think <laughs> I think if John's a Dane. Either way, even if John's not a Dane, I don't think it's impossible that he becomes the sword of the morning. Because, like I said, I think the sword of the morning. There's, I think there's a chance that the Sword of the Morning doesn't actually have to be by the Dane. It, it might just have to be by somebody worthy of House Dane. I thought you said last time it was the most worthy Dane, not the oldest Dane. Yeah, it's definitely not just like the oldest Dane, but it might still be somebody within House Dane. It, but I thought that was also... It's, a, it's it's mere mere. I think there's a chance that like the way that it's actually told to us, it's just like, oh, only someone worthy can have it. And it's implied that it's House Dane, but never actually stated. It, isn't, so. that, isn't that mere mere? Mere mere? What's Thor's hammer? Mjolnir. Mjolnir, I was close. Yeah, only someone worthy. Yeah, so it's pretty much pretty much the same thing. But yeah, that, that's that's what I thought was cool. It's just again, we've heard this we've only heard the constellation twice, and it's in both back to back John chapters. Now we hear it with Dawn. How many other times have we brought up Dawn and John chapters? You no, know, I, I get it. I, I thought you meant like the point of saying like it, it's a diamond in in the dawn. Like no, what, no. Do you, what, what does that care? What do you Just care? the sort of the morning and dawn together thing is. is yeah, what I, I think. Was... Uh, I mean, like I said, I put it in my notes too. It was like, hmm, sort of the morning, John chapter. Yeah, because dawn again. I don't think it points to the parentage of John at all, but I think it does point to the future of John, foreshadowing wise. Like he's gonna be the one wielding dawn at the end of all this thing. He's gonna be the yeah, sword of the I mean, morning, cool. which maybe does imply he's a he's a Dane. But I just I'm I'm curious to like how if all that stuff happens, it's gonna be a lot different story than the show, which I'll be excited about. Yeah, I mean the show just didn't have Dawn at all, so and Dawn is yeah. definitely gonna be a part of the book. So either way, I mean if at the end like John has to kill Danny, then it's actually like, but then that ignites the sword for him to go fight the exactly. army of the dead. Yeah. Like that's a lot different than. Him just killing Danny to walk off to fucking the north, you know, and just yeah, playing with ghosts for the rest of his life. Well, <laughs> I need to get, I need to talk to you. I need, we need to watch Lord I of the Rings. I can't wait for Dro. I can't wait for Drogon to that he's actually taking Danny back to be reincarnated. And <laughs> she comes back in the in the snow series. We got to uh, we got to watch Lord of the Rings because there's like some some things, some theories that people have about this stuff. I think stuff that George has even said where he compares certain characters and give this series to Lord of the Rings. And one of the ones that I think it makes, it makes it so that John's not that I liked it the way ex- exactly they did it, but that 
John ends if John ends up in the same spot he does in the show, I wouldn't really hate it. Where he's like, you know what, I'm going north. Fuck, fuck the rest of the kingdom. Uh, but again, yes. I, I can't really explain too much about why I think that's a cool ending uh, without giving like comparisons to Lord of the Rings. Go ahead. I guess Jeff took his headset off, so just for you guys. I think that the main thing is people say that everyone thinks that John is like Aragorn. He's the the king, the hidden king who comes back to save the day. Uh, but really, John is more like Frodo, who's the one who does save the day, but afterwards is so broken that home isn't like home for him anymore, and he has to fuck off to be by himself pretty much in isolation, like Frodo does at the end of Lord of the Rings. All right, All back right, with Jeff. I'm back. <laughs> what else you got, Jeff? Anything, uh... I guess just the horn, the horn talk. Little horn talk is the last thing I had too. Jeff dropped a little bit of a spoiler for Kyle. I'm gonna cut it out. I don't think Kyle, Kyle's either Kyle, either Kyle ignored it on purpose because he realized it was a little bit of a spoiler. I mean, or... he probably thought he probably thought I was wrong. The way you played it off, you're like, what are you talking about? And like, I tried to give you the out again. I'll cut. I'm gonna cut around some of this. So I don't know how to play out in the not spoiler. But I tried to give you the out of like, oh, we have heard of this one horn, yeah. and you actually brought this in. Kyle actually brought this up last time we heard about the Horn of Yorman with the the Sam one. Which I think the Sam one is the actual one. Well, I think the other thing that we talked about with Kyle is very interesting. Here, Egret says pretty much, not flat out, but very heavily implied in the way she says it. Uh, we opened half a hundred graves and let all those shades loose in the world. I don't know. I'm crying because we never found the Horn of Winter. We opened half a hundred graves and let all those shades loose in the world and never found the Horn of Yorman. So does that mean that the Horn of Winter and the Horn of Yorman is the same thing? She, I, she talks about I, both. That's of, how, she talks about the Horn of Winter in one sentence and the Horn of Yorman in the next one, and it sounds like it's the same thing. So, and she says, to bring this cold thing down. So either they're looking mm-hmm. for two different horns, which is possible the way this is written, but I take it it's the same horn. But she implies here that the Horn of Winter is the Horn of Yorman and that what it does is it takes the wall down. But like Kyle said, we've heard of a horn before, but never of a horn that brings down the wall. All we've heard of before is the Horn of Winter, the Horn of Yorman. In ancient days, Yorman, who blew the Horn of Winter and woke giants from the earth. So I guess already in past quotes we've heard about this horn, it's implied that this horn, the Horn of Winter and the Horn of Yorman are the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it implies that it, what it does is wakes giants from the earth, not brings the wall down. And there they have giants. Yeah. And when and when he's and it, that's the other time we've heard about this horn. When John sees the giants, John thinks about the horn and about the horn of Jorman. And I think he might even think like, did did Tormund already blow the horn? And that's how they got these giants. And mm-hmm. that's why he's called Hornblower. Yeah, no, I, I I recall. I I think Sam has the real horn, and I think it's I think. Well, what like, to do? Like that's my other. That's my question: is what does the horn do? Well, if we think about like where this thing's gonna end up. Sam's going to reunite with John at the end and it's going to help them in the, the battle of the long night. I would assume like, in some way, like it, maybe it pushes back the first wave of, of white walkers or others. And then the thing breaks again and they're like, ah, oh, fuck. You yeah. Know? Well, it's interesting. Like, it can't win that. I don't think it can win them the war, but I think it's going to be a tool that helps them yeah. in some ways. So I guess we're, we're some of this we talked about off air a little bit and we decided to start recording. So what you had said in the non spoiler was that Mance had a big horn and you thought that we had already seen this that Mance had a big horn. Yeah. Hey everyone, editing Nelson here. Here's the exact clip of what Jeff said in the non spoiler section. It's about a minute and a half long. They're looking for something, like find out what find it is. Find out what yes. it is. That's your that's your mission. So mm-hmm. and here's part. Kind of just found it out. It's kind of like. What's John? What does John say next? Is like an interesting, like yeah, because they <laughs> Mance had a big ass horn, right? Like w- there was a big ass horn when they met him. I think. When, I don't think when so. When he walked into his tent, or I, I'm pretty sure there was mention. So, of so I, I don't remember there being a horn or not, though. I thought there was mention of a of a horn being like well, the mention of a horn that I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask Kyle if he remembered a mention of a horn. There is one, and I think you brought it up I, recently. Actually. I definitely do remember hearing about this horn. Um, to raise the wall, I think, right? Isn't there some song with the giants? Well, we've heard about this or... horn of Jorman several times. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like the giants, when he was talking to the giants or something, there was a discussion about so exactly. it. Exactly. So every time we've heard about this before, in the ancient days, Jorman, who blew the horn of winter and woke giants from the earth, right? So that's what we've heard about yeah. the horn of Jorman before. I think we've heard it two or three times, actually. But here, Egret's claiming that that horn would take down the wall. But there's actually, we found a horn. John found a horn. Yeah, broken horn. Yeah, so that's that's the, the horn that I was with wondering. The, 
it was in with the the um dragon glass is that what it is exactly and yeah. i think that's the last time we talked about the, the horn of Jorman, you had brought that up and been like hmm there's we have this horn no so you'd have to do some research and if you don't do it i'll, I'll never call you out on it either when john first met mance or when he sees him at the top of the fist of the first man i thought there was mention that he like passed the big ass horn okay I'll, t- I'll look into it so what does john say next i feel like you pose that question and editing nelson here again that's the end of the non-spoiler clip Back to the spoiler section. And that's true. Mance does have a big horn, but I don't think we've seen it. There's a chance we've seen it. I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure yeah. we haven't seen this maybe, yet. Maybe not. I thought it was just kind of like in the in the setting of the room when he met him. Like, it wasn't mentioned at all. John wasn't like, wow, what a great big horn he has. It was like, oh, wow, like that's a big horn. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe so, not. So when he, we do see the horn is it's at the end of this book. I'm pretty sure it's after the battle against the Wildlings. When John goes out to basically say, like, the only way we're going to win this is if I kill Mance. Because I, kn- I know if I kill Mance, they're all going to fuck off because nothing holds him together. Yeah, there's no leader. But when he goes to talk to Mance, Mance shows him this big-ass horn. And basically, I'm pretty sure what Mance says is, like, I don't want to blow this thing. Because the reason I'm here is because we need to get away from the others. And that's what this wall is for. It's not for us. It's for the others. So let us on the other side. If you don't in three days, I'm going to have to blow the horn just so we can keep running. But I really don't want to do that because then... There's nothing stopping the others from yeah. getting to us eventually. We're right? just always running. Exactly. So uh, I think he pretty much gives John an ultimatum. You have a few days or I'm going to have Tormund blow this horn. Luckily, Stannis shows up. Doesn't come to that. Melisandre burns the horn. And then later, John talks to Tormund. And Tormund says, what did I had the horn of Jormund? I give it a nice toot and we climb through the rubble. And I'm pretty sure this is when they're, all the wildlings are being let through the wall. Mm-hmm. And John says Melisandre burned the horn of Jorman. <laughs> Did she? She burned that fine big horn. I a bloody sin, I call it. A thousand years old that was. We found it in a giant's grave, and no man of us had ever seen a horn so big. That must have been why Mance got the notion to tell you it were Jorman's. He wanted you crows to think he had in his power to blow your bloody wall down about your knees, but we never found the true horn, not for all our digging. If we had, every kneeler in your seven kingdoms would add chunks of ice to cool his wine all summer. Hmm. So what's interesting here is Tormund implies that Mance doesn't give a fuck. If he if we found yeah. this thing, well, first off, he does imply that what it does is it brings the wall down. It doesn't bring the giants back. Yeah. Uh, but he also implies that if they found it, they would have blown that, that shit right away. Like they like. I mean, I I think to the like to Mance's point, like sure, like let us through and I'll go through. But if not, I'm blowing the shit down. I mean, also Mance didn't have the real thing, so he's bluffing, right? right. So he he's he has hard, to say hard that. Bluff. Yeah, yeah. But the interesting thing is what he says when he's bluffing seems like a valid point. Why would you blow the wall down if the whole point is to get away yeah, from the others? No. Yeah, exactly. I think that's true. And I think Mance is smart enough to know yeah. that. So I think the horn is one of those mysteries that we still don't know. It does seem very possible that it's the thing, the horn that Sam has. I mean, it's kind mm. of, that's that horn is kind of like Chekhov's horn, right? Like, right. Why, like why, why, why bring mention up? this? <laughs> yeah. How long ago? That was that second book. He found that horn. Yeah. It had to be last book. Cause that's when John was at the fist with everybody. Yeah. So, and yeah. it's broken, right? Isn't it cracked? Yeah, or? they tried to blow it and they couldn't. So it's already broken. But he, I, what's interesting is he takes it with him to the Citadel. So I wonder yeah. if he'll like see a drawing of the Horn of Yorman in like some old book or something like that and be like, That'd holy be cr- shit, I have that in my backpack. And he has super glue? <laughs> yeah. Takes it to the carpentry shop or something. <laughs> but Yeah. Yeah, so that was all I got. The, the Horn is definitely what's, interesting. Uh, do, you, do you not know what happens with John next? Does he leave Egret next chapter? I think the next time, I think it's probably a while till we see him, and I think we probably it's like the next big thing that I remember with John is him and Bran have a run in. Uh, they don't right. actually Brand's have a run in, but Bran's in the tower, and yeah. Bran saves him with Summer. Right? Yeah, he he takes off. He says "fuck you, Egret," and he he dips because I think they're trying to make him kill somebody. He decides not yeah, to, Farmer, runs away. Right? But I mean, I'm pretty sure what show. what happens is Summer shows up to like save the day, and that's yeah. how John escapes is with the help of Summer. I think I think the shows might be similar there. He was trying to kill. He was about to kill a farmer, and instead of well, Bran's in a tower, a special tower called Queen Queen's Crown Tower, yeah, because yeah. when Alisane, Queen Alisane like, came, uh, they made it or something like that, and they painted the top of it yellow to look like a Queen's Crown in honor of Queen Alisane, who came and gave them the new gift and, mm-hmm. and basically did a bunch of stuff in the north. I think Bran just watches. I don't think he helps. Uh, well, I think one of the things Bran does is one of those things where we get to. I'm pro- we'll probably get a John and Bran chapter back to back. I'm pretty sure that the same thing that happens in the show. Hodor starts freaking out 
right. and is making noise, and Bran wargs into Hodor to stop it without really knowing what happens, but right. that's kind of what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think Summer helps John. I'm pretty I'm sure. Saying. I think he does. But I'm, again, it's been a while since I read that. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, you might be right. I might be having a show in the so. brain. I might be having a show in the brain there. It just it just makes sense that like how else would no? John... I'm saying Summer doesn't show up in the show. Oh, you might you might. Uh, Wouldn't that have been like why the Summer, fuck no, Summer here? Summer and Rickon definitely both show up in the show, and he does. He thinks about it in both. He, well, again, I don't know if we ever says it in the show, but in the in the books, he definitely thinks that Bran. What he thinks is that Bran and Rickon are dead, though. So he's like, "Holy shit, Summer showed up and helped me," even though Bran's dead. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll go watch. Because in the show, it's but... different because Rickon's still with them. Rickon's already gone, and I'm pretty sure right after this is when they send Rickon. Right after John fucks off is when they send Rickon off. Agreed, I do. Also, Orel's still with them at this point, and he's the one who's being sus on the tower. I'm pretty sure in the books, John is the one telling Egret about the tower while Bran's in it, and he even says like, "Oh, I, I think there's a secret passageway, like a secret walkway we could use." <laughs> if you want, I'm watching it. So, all right, John is going to kill. He's got sword at the farmer's neck. Big, big backswing. Egret shoots farmer. Tormund's fighting Egret. John kills two wildlings. No sign of any Stark. Bran is now warging. Into Hodor? Oh, no, Summer. I think Shaggy Dogs kills a few people, too. You just get a few shots of, like, a person and then a wolf. Oh, you're right. <laughs> there's, there's Summer. There's Shaggy Dog. John, I think it's about to kill Orel. Yep. See you, Arel. And what he tells Arel, you were right the whole time. Oh, uh, eagle. Eagle to the eye. This is where John gets clawed. Yeah, yeah. There might be another John chapter before this one, but I think that's that's probably next. I think there are a lot of John chapters in this book, like 12 or something like that. Yeah, so you just watched the, you watched the clip. I was right. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm just, just for the editing. Just for the editing's sake. Okay. Is that for that sake? Is that why? <laughs> well, so I think that's what happens, right? We were talking about a little bit what happens in there. I think that the main thing that happens in the next, the, there might be another John chapter that I'm forgetting about of them. Like, why doesn't Summer and Shaggy Dog kill Tormund and Egret in the show? Because they know. I don't just know. Plot yeah, just plot, plot armor. Yeah, plot armor. Oh yeah, we'll kill everybody but Tormund and Egret. It's interesting that like how much different stuff they have in the show. Like even at that point, like Tormund's not there, Orel's already dead. But, like, mm-hmm. pretty much by the end of that, it's all the same. Like, Tormund's on the other side of the wall is really the only difference. Arell's dead. John's got the scars on his face. Those go away in an episode. But. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some. He's you can't got leave some scars Kit, you can't leave Kit Harrington's ugly face. Yeah, you can't be. <laughs> Her beautiful face all scarred up. But, yeah, now we're just kind of just rambling. Uh, that's the last thing I had. <laughs> Horn, Horn, Horn and Dawn was all I had for this one. So. Yeah. Same. Next right. one. Next, next Jamie one in a while. And it. He's missing a hand, so that'll be interesting because it's, it's the first non it's the first Jamie without a hand and not and not bath time. It's not bath time, right? He no. he's without a hand. I, like... th- I think bath time's close, like another like a chapter or two. And there's there will okay. be some interesting revelations that I think Kyle will start coming around on Jamie. I mean, just when the guy loses his hand, it makes you feel for him a little bit, even if he is a yeah. dickhead. And then again, we'll start learning some stuff. For the I don't next know if Kyle's gonna feel for him. I think Kyle's gonna be like good riddance. There's some things that when you think about it, like straight up on paper, like. Who cares if Ares was going to burn everybody? He still pushed Bran out a window. Like, he's still... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there's a bunch not. of bad shit he's done. Even if that you one has just, an excuse. To his point, like, one bad thing made me, like, the worst. But you've done more than one bad thing. Like you're... But then I think it's interesting because after that we can talk about, like, what Preston Jacobs calls the, the Jamie dilemma. Which is, like, just, like, the whole point of what he says to Catelyn when Catelyn... Right before he, she frees him. It's like... You're sworn to defend the weak, defend the king, obey your father, protect the innocent. Like, what if your father hates the king? Mm-hmm. What if your king commands you to kill the innocent? It's yeah, like at some you're point breaking one vow or the other. So I think you can kind of see that everywhere. Even when, technically, even when he's banging Cersei and he pushes Bran out the window, like, I'm sure he's yeah. defending one vow there, whether it's like defend the queen or keep her secrets or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. He might no, be doing so. something right, but. Alright, so wrap it up. We're rambling. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe. Bye bye.